We have to begin overseas. President Biden is meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin this morning over video chat. He plans to warn Moscow against invading Ukraine or risk severe economic penalties. According to people familiar with the matter, that could mean potential sanctions targeting Russia's biggest banks and the country's ability to convert rubles to dollars. The Biden-Putin call comes with tensions high over what U.S. intelligence has told allies could be a plan to invade Ukraine with as many as 175,000 troops in 2022. Russia has denied plans to go to war, but has also said U.S. and European nations should scale back their support for Ukraine. So here to discuss all of this is Josh Wing Wingrove, live at the White House for us. He is our White House reporter and also Leonid Bershinsky, columnist with Bloomberg Opinion. Thank you both for being here. Josh, have to start with you. What's at stake for this call? I mean, a lot of people are talking about both sides of this. What's your read? Well, the I guess the objective here for President Biden is to lay out a response. We're not really sure how detailed that will be, but essentially to try to factor into what is essentially a cost-benefit analysis that we think that Vladimir Putin is doing about how you know, much to stick his toe in the water, if you will, and whether to do any sort of incursion or invasion of Ukraine. And that, we're told, includes coordinated measures with the EU, uh, things like restrictions on foreign uh, currency exchange, uh, sanctions targeting Russian banks and the Russian Direct Investment Fund. That's the menu of options. We're told that the U.S. and EU are stopping short for now of threatening to try to force Russia out of the SWIFT financial tra transfers program. That would be a, like a, sort of a, a nuclear option, if you will, a much bigger option. All these measures are contingent on whether Russia actually does move forward. As for Putin, you know, the, the perception, at least here in the U.S., is that he has not made a decision on what to do in the Ukraine. And uh, some analysts are saying the call itself is something that he is seeking. He, of course, gets FaceTime with President Biden, virtual FaceTime at that. So we'll see how it happens. Biden has teed up this call by, of course, speaking with allies yesterday, uh, the UK, France, Germany, and Italy. He'll speak with those leaders again after the call, as well as with Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky, uh, who uh, had a call with Secretary Blinken before this. So he's trying to present a united front, and we'll see what comes of it. We expect this meeting, though, to be closed to the press in entirety. So it'll be a, a case of of spin doctors, if you will, afterwards from either side. Spin doctors. Uh, Leonid, jump in here, because as Josh was just outlining, we don't really know uh, what Vladimir Putin is going to do. What do you think? Is this a genuine threat um, from the Russian president, or does he just want to get this meeting with President Biden? Well, uh, President Putin is uh, trying to air, um, you know, his vision of the red lines um, when it comes to Ukraine, uh, he has repeated several times over the course of the last uh, couple of weeks that uh, what he wants to avoid at any cost is um, a deployment of some sort of, um, uh, you know, NATO uh, strike forces or missiles or anything like that in Ukraine, regardless of whether Ukraine uh, has a path toward NATO membership. Uh, or not. So um, he's at, he and the foreign minister Lavrov are making uh, a big effort to, um, uh, to to make these red lines clear. Um, and uh, I think uh, that is one reason for the you know the military buildup and the, the fact that he, you know that Putin is uh, eager to talk to, to President Biden. It's not as if President Biden can tell him anything new about the extent of, of Western sanctions on Russia in case Russia does a full invasion of Ukraine. All he can do, actually, if he outlines uh, the sanctions that we just heard, uh, could be uh, actually to push Putin toward, uh, uh, you know, some, some military moves, because, the, you know, uh, without uh, a swift cutoff, and uh, with some limited sanctions on, um, you know, banks uh, and the ruble convertibility, that might not be such a, a, a hugely damaging uh, set of sanctions as, as Putin might have thought without being, uh, you know, right. before this call and, and, and all of this actually developed. But Leonid, I mean, you mentioned the red lines. What, what are the actual red lines that, that Putin 
can lay out here for the West if it's not launching an attack? I mean, we've seen this from him before. So, so what are you expecting to hear from the Russian president on this front? Um, because the U.S. has made has, st has stood pretty firm in saying uh, that they are supporting Ukraine. So, so I'm curious what you think uh, Putin then uh, is is trying to do is or is walking away from this meeting with. Oh, he's trying. He's just trying to make it clear that uh, he draws the line at uh, mm, large scale military deployments and especially missile deployments. And he's actually, you know, he's maximum demand is that uh, the U.S. and NATO guarantee that this will never happen. But it's, uh, you know, it's impossible to expect such a guarantee. So he's basically just sort of trying to get uh, Biden and uh, the leaders of other NATO member states um, that this is, you know, this is something that he will react violently if it happens. Leonid, can you talk a little bit about what you see as the sort of scale of options in front of President Putin? Because the U.S. response is conditional kind of on an all or nothing thing. You know, the way they framed it is if they invade Ukraine, they are, uh, the response will be X. But of course, there's a few options sort of short of invading Ukraine that Putin, the agitator, could be looking at. What do you think are some of those options and which, like, at, at what point Will the U.S. and E.U. be sort of obliged to respond, if not with all the measures that they, they may lay out on this call, but with some of them? Well, let's just start with the fact that he's already invaded. Uh, back in uh, 2014, he's, you know, he took Crimea. Uh, then in 2015, uh, 14 and 15, there were, uh, you know, pretty well proven interventions. Uh, on the side of the separatists in eastern Ukraine. So the invasion has already taken place, and the sanctions in response to this limited invasion have been extremely weak and ineffective, and they haven't really changed his course of action at all. Uh, so, uh, you know, the sort of the palette of actions that, uh, that Putin has uh, includes uh, limited, further limited moves further support for the separatists, um, possibly, uh, you know, limited, limited pushes by the separatists into the Ukrainian territory, where he'll still hope to have deniability. Um, a a full-on attack is, uh, uh, is, is a last resort. Uh, it's, it's something that he says he will do if there's a missile, a Western missile deployment, a NATO missile deployment in Ukraine, that's what he's saying. Uh, you know, how likely that kind of scenario is, the deployment and the invasion, that is uh, entirely a different map. Yeah, there's still a lot yeah. of asterisks there. Uh, Josh, I wanted to, to fi finish with you. Uh, President Biden has been criticized a bit for his foreign policy uh, in his first year. I, I'm, what would be a walking away for, what would he need to, to leave this meeting feeling good about? I mean, would it be just getting a clear uh, answer from Vladimir Putin about what he won't do? Or, or what, what's your read on this? What does the Biden administration want to walk away from this meeting with? Well, the position they're in is that they can't set red lines if they're not willing to respond to them if Putin crosses them. The U.S. definitely views Putin as the instigator of the current rising tensions as opposed to you know, a suggestion that it's U.S. presence or the threat of U.S. presence in Ukraine that is making Putin respond. And so Biden will have to sort of lay out consequences. I think that they hope that those consequences are more inf effective in deterring actions than, you know, uh, forcing a retreat once any actions are in place. In other words, it's, it's easier to perhaps convince someone to not do something than it is to convince them to backtrack once they've done it. But if these things happen, then the pr proof is going to be in the pudding in the U.S. response. One of the things we've seen that we saw in 2014, as Leonid referred to with the Crimea and Donbass uh, uh, conflicts and, and incursions, uh, was increased NATO rotations through NATO eastern flank allies and countries. Uh, the U.S. is open to that again. In other words, we could see allied troops rotating through, uh, and that would, of course, mean tensions rising in the region. But you know, Joe Biden, I think, wants what they call a predictable relationship with uh, Russia, of course, an adversary. Uh, this call will uh, is the fourth since Biden became president. It will be sort of a key step in seeing whether they'll ever be able to get to that.
Absolutely. All right. Josh Wingrove, White House reporter and also uh, Leonid Brzezinski, columnist with Bloomberg Opinion. Thank you both so much for starting us off this morning.